Spoiler warning, this video includes spoilers to the Chainsaw Man manga. However, if you clicked on this video not having read the manga, then you're a little weird in the first place. However, if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, that way you're notified whenever a new video pops up on some of your favorite anime, manga, or whatever content. Now we can move on to the video. Quote, I also like women who are tough and unreasonable. When I was in college, there was a girl who teased me, and one day she flipped my bike over and told me, I flipped your bike over, ha ha ha. I felt so happy somehow at the time, end quote. Now if my sources are correct, this quote comes from Fujimoto himself, the author of Chainsaw Man. And I think it's an important quote to bring up at the beginning of this video, as I think it's going to tie into what I have to say about Denji later. But Fujimoto to me has always been a bit odd as an author. Fujimoto is quite unorthodox, especially in the way he is with his characters. And the way he really goes about that is by giving them each a ginormous sort of character flaw. Look at Fire Punch or Chainsaw Man. The majority or if not all the characters have something about them that many times can be off-putting and surprising. And it's not really your typical character flaws either. Many times they're just flat out weird. Look at Himeno, look at Power, and more specifically look at Denji. When the anime for Chainsaw Man comes out, I definitely do see it having a volatile reaction. Some people who absolutely enjoy it, and other people who can't get past the weirdness of it. Now personally, even though like I said, I do find Fujimoto to be interesting, I do really think that his ability to include such oddities within his stories is what makes them so compelling. The reason why I bring all this up is because even though I think Chainsaw Man has already and even furthermore will break into the mainstream, I genuinely believe that it's not a story for everyone. And if there's a place to start with that, it would be the protagonist, Denji. And the reason I say this is because what's typical of what most people expect from a protagonist is somebody with some sort of ability to serve as inspiration a role model, someone that can inspire in one way or another, be it an underdog story or somebody of immense character and just badassery. And Denji isn't really either. He isn't somebody with a noble goal, nor is he somebody with this grand outlandish goal that seems out of his reach. In fact, his goals are trivial, if not kind of sad. He wants to touch a pair of boobs. And don't get me wrong, on a surface level that sounds hilarious, and in fact it is quite silly. However, there's a bit more nuance to that, I believe. Knowing Denji's backstory, somebody who hasn't been cared for for almost his entire life, lives amongst the trash, and now has somebody who cares about him. Denji, an uneducated individual, surrounded by women for probably the first time in his entire life. I think with Denji it's obvious that love isn't entirely the goal but if not validation and the feeling of being wanted is good enough. But yet I feel like a lot of that won't really be appreciated with Denji's character at first and will always be condensed to just a guy who's horny. Which, don't get me wrong, he is, but Denji is more than that. I brought up earlier that Denji is uneducated. He's somebody who seemed to have worked alone almost his entire life, or pretty much alone his entire life. Therefore, with all of our other protagonists, they end up being surrounded by people who can push him in the right direction. Denji runs into Makima, a manipulative control devil who wants Chainsaw Man, and not Denji. And Denji not knowing better is easily taken advantage of. Now, for any of us who've been through something similar to that, the feeling of being taken advantage of, something like this was obvious for a mile away. But for Denji, it's not. Like I said, it's probably the first time in his entire life he's encountered anybody like this. Somebody who wants him, or at least that's what he thinks. So why wouldn't he do anything possible? to please the person who's giving him the stuff he wants, and who will possibly fulfill his sexual desires. And honestly, I was really wary of including the piece at the beginning, but I do think it's important, as I see Denji as kind of Fujimoto's self-insert into the story a little bit, and Makimo being the ideal woman he's into. It really pains me to say that, but I don't think it's a stretch to think that that's the case. I really thought it needed to be included because I truly think that there is so much more nuance to Denji than people are willing to give him credit for. As I was bringing up earlier with my points, I think it's really important for me to again emphasize the fact that Denji does not have proper education as a human being. And I think one of the most important things for us as people to be able to move forward is to be able to understand ourselves. That's why family is so important. That's why a stable household is very important. The guideship and the mentorship of somebody more experienced than you in life is almost invaluable. There is truly no price for wisdom, and I think one of the greatest things one can do as a person is understand one's own emotions. But I think when it comes to Denji as a character, the reality of it is, is he doesn't really seem to understand his emotions at all at the beginning. He thinks he knows what he's doing, but it's obvious that he's just being manipulated. 
and his development throughout the story is breaking free from that. And it really pains me how it's about finding your own identity and not simping and all these other things, but yet the fan base is, is the way the fan base is. Not all the fan base, but you know exactly what sector I'm talking about now. But Denji questioning his relationships with the people he's currently around and what his emotional reactions would be if each of them were to die. That part alone really communicated to me strongly that Denji doesn't really understand himself at all or his identity. Is he Denji, or is he the Chainsaw Man that Makima wants him to be? And I really think that in its core, it's a really important and vital message to really anybody, but especially the age range that Denji coexists in, and our generation. The need to find our own identity and not allow that to be formed by other people who just want what we have and not who we are. The importance of education and being surrounded by the proper people and understanding one's own emotions. All of these things are within Denji's character, but yet the surface level aspect of him being horny, I think will draw a lot of people away from his character, and I think lead to a lot of unnecessary talk regarding that. I don't wish this upon Denji's character, nor Chainsaw Man, for people to attack it, but I definitely do see a lot of slanders thrown at Denji as a character, be it sexist or misogynist or whatever other term they want to refer to him as. And I think that's just really ignoring all of the things that made Denji who he is, or correction, the lack of things around Denji that allowed him to be the way he is. Now, I will say this, and this could be different for everyone, but I will say it regarding myself, and maybe some other people have a shared experience with this, but I think Chainsaw Man and Fujimoto's way of writing is very chaotic at times. Many different things happen, it's a very fast-paced story. So I don't blame anybody if certain things about Denji's character like that can really get lost within the shuffle. For example, the pieces of foreshadowing with Denji and not opening the door, and all of the planning that Makima had behind all of this. A boy who's worked his entire life to clear his father's debts, and yet the mystery and secret as to how he became an orphan being something he might have to come to terms with. And when he does, well things get even trickier than they were before. Denji having this immense desire and need to be wanted by someone now has to kill the person he's wanted to be with. A lot of things happen to Denji in the latter half of the Chainsaw Man story. The weirdest part really being his resolve and how he ends up defeating said enemy. Instead of wanting to kill her, he decides to become one with her. Hence the scene that we have at the very end. And so even though Denji's goals are horny and trivial, and don't get me wrong, there's plenty of people who enjoy him because of their relatability to said goals, I think that Denji is without a doubt one of the most unique shonen protagonists we've ever seen. And I think also a really good one who communicates very important messages to today's generation. However, I think when discussing certain topics with characters who are extremely flawed, I think a good example being Evangelion, there will definitely be a volatile reaction to Chainsaw Man in that regard, I think. Hence why I titled this video the controversial nature of Denji, because I think for just as many people who love and adore Denji's character, I see a lot of people who are unfortunately disgusted and turned away by it. But that's really the beauty and subjectivity when it comes to art. The same thing you enjoy might not be the same thing I enjoy. It would be too much for me to ask for always healthy disagreements, but what matters is that you were able to enjoy the story and take things away from it regardless. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and once again if you are new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications. This has been The Masked Man, hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day, and peace.